This video is sponsored by Established Titles. The opening weekend numbers for Thor Love and Thunder are in, and if it were any other movie performing like this, it would have been a smash hit. But this isn't any other random movie. Not only is it an MCU movie, it's an MCU movie featuring none other than Thor himself, one of the few remaining OG Phase 1 heroes. And that makes this box office worrying for Disney. So much so that right now, the Disney number crunchers are asking themselves, just how bad is this? Because as we shall see, these numbers may have implications beyond this one movie. In this editorial, I will begin by exploring the baseline for MCU success. How Thor's box office is worse than it appears, and why that may be particularly troubling for the MCU going forward. To those wondering just who am I to explain all this, I'm Andre, a financial analyst, and I can also be referred to as Lord Einherjach. And courtesy of established titles, this video sponsor, I have the certificate to prove it. Established Titles is a project based around a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lads, or lords and ladies in English. Through Established Titles, you can be the owner of at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Ardley, Aberdeenshire, Scotland, which by Scottish tradition makes you a lord or a lady, and you'll get an official certificate with a crest to prove it. This certificate features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. But there's more to it. To support worldwide reforestation efforts, established titles work with global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future, so for every order a tree will be planted. This is of course a fun novelty, and it makes for a great gift. Better yet, in places where prefixes are allowed in official documents, you might even be able to replace Mr. or Miss with Lord and Lady. Established Titles is running a big summer sale right now, and if you use our code MNIGHT10 in one word, you get an additional 10% off. Go to establishedtitles.com slash MNIGHT10 to get your gifts and your titles now. Link is in the description. With that, let's get into the numbers and the trends that can be derived from them. Ever since 2012's Avengers Rocked the World, the MCU has been the biggest entertainment brand in history, so far culminating with Avengers Endgame, at least from a financial point of view. Nothing has reached those box office heights since, and for most of the Phase 4 movies up till this point, that could be explained away. Black Widow was released day and date on Disney+, Plus and during the lockdowns. Shang-Chi and The Eternals both came out when theaters had reopened, but many were still anxious about going, and on top of that, both centered around brand new characters unknown to the movie-going audience. But then Spider-Man No Way Home came out and grossed more than 800 million domestically and almost 2 billion worldwide. And the upcoming theatrical release of the extended cut will probably push that total beyond 2 billion. As such, Spider-Man No Way Home demonstrated to the Disney moneymen that pandemic excuses are null and void. We are back where any MCU movie can be expected to gross a billion, especially if it's a sequel with legacy characters. This was recently further hammered in by Top Gun Maverick, which despite the worst economy for generations, was also able to cross that billion. The point I'm making is that ever since Spider-Man No Way Home, Disney are internally projecting each and every MCU sequel to reach a billion. Anything under a billion will be seen as something of a disappointment. With that established, let's look at some numbers. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness crossed nearly $190 million in its domestic opening weekend. Which is enough that it not only should be able to fly past a billion, with good word of mouth, a billion and a half should have been within reach. But it didn't get good word of mouth. It tanked in its second weekend, indicating bad word of mouth, and it capped out at $950 million worldwide. Granted, that is within striking distance of a billion, and the movie was profitable for them, very much so. But remember, the lead-in movie was Spider-Man No Way Home. Doctor Strange only grossed half of what it did, so you can rest assured Marvel and Disney see it as a slight disappointment. But they're not worried about the odd disappointment here and there that happens. 
They're worried about trends, more specifically downward trends. And downward trends begin with turning points. That brings us to Thor, Love and Thunder. Thor Love and Thunder opened to more than 140 million, which appears to represent a 20 million dollar increase from Thor Ragnarok's opening weekend back in 2017. And that is indeed the main argument that those who try to sell this as a win lean on. But the numbers are deceiving. You see, in reality, that 20 million dollar increase is actually explained by inflation and ticket price hikes. That part place did the math, and according to their numbers, 2 million fewer audiences went to see Thor and Love and Thunder this weekend than went to see Thor Ragnarok in its opening weekends back in 2017. 2 million fewer tickets sold from one opening weekend to the next is significant. The trades might not want to dwell too much on that, but you can rest assured that Disney's number crunchers will because up till this point, the trend for the MCU has been that not just the dollar amount increases from film to film within a series, but that the dollar increase is driven by an increase in the absolute number of tickets sold, meaning the audience expands. Case in point, more people went to see Spider-Man No Way Home than went to see Far From Home, and despite the slight underperformance, more people went to see Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness than went to see the original Doctor Strange. But fewer went to see Thor Love and Thunder than went to see Thor Ragnarok. As such, Thor Love and Thunder represents the very first outwardly measurable point where the MCU audience contracted from one film in a series to the next. Here it should be injected that nothing can grow forever, with movies like Spider-Man No Way Home or Avengers Endgame. A slight audience contraction is to be expected because those movies captured the zeitgeist in a manner comparable to what Avatar and Titanic did, meaning that they're maxed out and have nowhere left to grow because everyone and their grandma already went to see them and then went back for repeat viewings. But that is not the case with Thor, an MCU sub-franchise with mass appeal and plenty untapped audience potential and plenty of room left to grow. Case in point, no Thor movie to date has crossed a billion, and Love and Thunder won't be the one to do it, although it should have been. Given the word of mouth, however, it will be lucky to match Ragnarok's unadjusted 850 million. That leaves the question though, is Thor Love and Thunder a fluke? One movie rejected by the audience on its own merits? Or is it a turning point, heralding a downward trend for the MCU? Let's explore both possibilities. There are reasons why the audience might have rejected this one movie without that having any larger significance. In my review, I argue that Thor Ragnarok in many ways was compatible to director Joel Schumacher's Batman Forever. It was the third movie in the franchise and a response to the way too dreary movie preceding it, so it went in a far more colorful and humorous direction, which most enjoyed, but that some saw as a step in the wrong direction. They were vindicated, because the next movie out went way overboard, making Thor Love and Thunder the Batman and Robin of the MCU. I stand by that assessment, and would like to add that it is also the Lady in the Water of the MCU, because just like M. Night Shyamalan before him, director Taika Waititi bought into his own hype, thought that he could do no wrong, and as a result, he kind of flicked too hard, going way overboard with everything, including his own self-insert. The end result? The second worst cinema score in MCU history, following The Eternals. For those who may not know, CinemaScore is in a sense exit polling, where audiences give their instant grade on their way out of the theatre, and it is noteworthy that Thor The Dark World holds higher. The executives at Disney and Marvel better hope that that is all this is, one bad movie, and that the audience will be back in droves for the next one and the one after that. But if they're not, we're looking at a downwards trend. The past few years have been rough on Disney, and the past few months even more so. 
For the foreseeable future, Star Wars is relegated to Disney+. Even Taika Waititi's Star Wars movie is most likely in the process of being scrapped. More on that in another video. The Pixar brand went down in flames alongside Lightyear, and as we covered in our post-mortem of it, a big part of that was due to the decreasing audience trust in the Disney brand as a whole. If it should turn out that that now extends to Marvel as well, compounded by some Disney Plus MCU burnout, that would pose a major threat to Disney's corporate bottom line. Because at this point in time, the MCU is their golden goose. Unfortunately for Disney, there are some indications the MCU may indeed be in a downward trend. Prior to Thor Love and Thunder opening, long-range opening weekend forecasts projected a $200 million opening weekend. But the closer the movie came to release, the more projections were revised down. Down to $155 million just before the opening weekend, and the final tally didn't even meet that. Those long-range projections may have been lofty, but they were based on existing market conditions, and more often than not, such long-range predictions end up being in the ballpark. What is disturbing from Disney's point of view is that those long-range predictions may have been accurate at the time they were made, and thus reflect a genuine decline in interest in the MCU. Still, it will take a couple more movies till we can say for sure if Thor Love and Thunder was a fluke or the turning point where the MCU took a measurable downward slide in audience appeal and confidence. What do you think happened? Let me know in the comments. And before you go, remember that Established Titles is running a big sale right now, and if you use our code MNIGHT10 in one word, you get an additional 10% off. Go to https colon slash slash established slash mnight10 now. Link is in the description.